Francis Patrick Duffy was born in Coburg, Ontario, May 2, 1871. He studied at St. Michael's College in Toronto, then moved to New York, where he realized he was called to the priesthood. After studying at St. Joseph Seminary in Yonkers, he was ordained a priest. He then earned his doctorate at Catholic University and began teaching at St. Joseph Seminary. His first parish assignment was to Our Savior Church in the Bronx, where he led the construction of a new church and school. One of his early innovations was the implementation of child care in parishes so mothers of small children could go to church. Recognizing the great need for Catholic military chaplains, Father Duffy volunteered to serve with the Fighting 69th in the Spanish-American War in 1898. During service, he contracted typhoid fever and was sent home to his parish. When the U.S. joined World War I, he was reinstated as the chaplain of the 69th Regiment, which was then redesignated as the 165th Infantry Division. When Father Duffy was first introduced to the 69th, he showed leadership by bringing the men together. He said, I come to you in soldiers' togs with a message from the church. I want to be your friend, whatever your religion may be. I know many of you are leaving families behind you and will have many worries. Come to me with them and you will find me ready with the wide word and a merry one. This concisely summarizes the leadership style of Father Duffy. He would always be there for the men. One soldier said, His religion consisted of a cheery word, a smile, and a slap on the back. He was more than a chaplain. He was a friend to all. Father Duffy further showed his leadership skills during the 69th basic training at Camp Mills. He kept the regiment together through many mishaps, including a brawl with the 4th Alabama Division, whose contentious history with the 69th dated back to the Civil War. Father Duffy led the officers in breaking up the brawl with the hot-headed 4th Alabamans. Father Duffy helped these mismatched transfers feel welcome. After his intervention, peace reigned and all the men accepted each other as fellow Americans. On the ship taking them across the Atlantic, the poet Joyce Kilmer wrote of Duffy, Every day there could be seen a line of soldiers, as long as the mess line, waiting their turn to have Duffy hear their confessions. Every morning, Kilmer noted, a large crowd of soldiers would gather amidships on the transport where Chaplain Duffy would say mass at an altar made from a longboard resting on two nail kegs. When they got to France, their first battle was at the Rouge Bouquet. In this battle, a section of the tunnels in the trenches collapsed, killing many soldiers of the 69th. Some of the officers of the 69th frantically dug out the men who were buried alive. Meanwhile, Father Duffy was encouraging these traumatized men to be brave for their first battle. Despite his calmness and resolution under fire, even Duffy could not escape the horrors of the Western Front unscathed. Witnesses recall that in turning over one young soldier to give the last rites, Duffy broke down in tears. He remembered baptizing him as a baby. Father Duffy deeply loved the soldiers he led. Father Duffy's leadership shone brightly at the battle at Camp de Chalon. Amidst a terrifying barrage of shells, coupled with German deceptions that included soldiers with machine guns disguised as French Red Cross workers, the American and French line held to victory. During this battle, Father Duffy worked tirelessly for 48 hours straight under enemy fire to retrieve soldiers. One soldier said, just seeing Father Duffy was enough to calm your jaded nerves, for his face radiated a cheerful calm, which made the hell around us seem unreal. He may as well have been walking down the aisle of a silent cathedral. He spoke little personal things to each of the men. It was as though his thoughts were not on the battle, as though no battle were going on. Father Duffy's leadership injected his men with courage so they could continue to serve. The Germans attacked again the next day. During the battle, Father Duffy was at the front lines hearing confessions and saying mass, as well as visiting and counseling the soldiers. As a soldier described, it was by his ministry of presence that he had his greatest influence and became an almost legendary figure. A great leader inspires his followers to greatness through the trials of tragedy and fear. After one particularly brutal battle with numerous casualties, Father Duffy refreshed his demoralized troops by saying, What your forefathers have done in the past, I feel confident you will do in the future. The Irish love right and liberty, and they have fought, and always will fight, and fight valiantly, when neither right or liberty is at stake. Pointing toward the German guns, he exclaimed, You uphold on that front the name and the reputation of the 69th, of which I am proud to be a chaplain. The 69th fought valiantly in the battles of Meuse Argonne, St. Michiel, Chateau Chiri, and Champagne. Father Duffy's unfailing leadership guided his men to greatness. At one point during an offensive, General Douglas MacArthur, recognizing Father Duffy's leadership, considered doing something very unorthodox, making him the commander of a regiment. Great leaders recognized leadership in others. By the end of the war, the 165th Regiment was depleted to less than half of its original strength. Due to its unfailing courage in battle, the men never turned back while under fire. 
Although as a chaplain, he refused to carry weapons, Father Duffy was always in the thick of the action and sustained serious wounds. Through his bravery in the Great War, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the Distinguished Service Medal, and the Croix de Guerre. After the war, Father Duffy returned to New York and was appointed pastor at Holy Cross Church, located in the Theater District near Times Square. He served there for the next 12 years. When Father Duffy died on June 27, 1932, of a lengthy illness, Monsignor John P. Chidwick, presiding over Father Duffy's funeral, wrote, Hundreds of friends of all faiths had flooded the mails with letters of concern and hope for his recovery. The Irish chaplain of an Irish regiment won fame and decorations from his own and the French government for his devotion to his men under fire during the World War. An estimated 25,000 people of all walks of life attended Father Duffy's funeral at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Trying to squeeze her way past a barricade for a better view, a woman was stopped by a police officer. She protested, claiming to be a friend of the deceased. The officer replied, That is true, ma'am, of everyone here today. Father Duffy has inspired many chaplains to greatness. Major General John Ellington, the former director of the National Guard Chaplain Corps, said, When I started learning about Father Duffy, the man evolved into my personal hero. He was someone that I could look up to and think, When I grow up, I would like to be like Father Duffy. Bishop Neil Buchan of the Archdiocese of the Military wrote, Father Francis Duffy is still a national hero, and the pride of the Army Chaplain Corps. Those who see a statue standing tall in Times Square in New York City are either inspired by a man who dedicated his life to God and country, or are left wondering what remarkable deeds he accomplished in war that would cause a great city like New York to honor him. Bishop Buchan continues, The movie, The Fighting 69th, portrayed Father Duffy as a fearless chaplain, who nourished the living, cared for the wounded, and honored the dead. Although the movie is not shown often enough, I am certain that many of our chaplains have seen the movie and were inspired by it. I myself enjoyed reading about Father Duffy. I liked his sense of humor. On one occasion, when the unit was about to be overrun, a major offered Father Duffy two grenades to which Father Duffy replied, You stick to your trade, and I'll stick to mine. In addition to these examples, Father Duffy's legacy is sustained through books including memoirs and the book Duffy's War. He is also featured in a video encouraging vocations to the Chaplain Corps. Father Duffy's legacy extends to the political realm. His friend, Al Smith, ran for President of the United States in 1928 despite anti-Catholic bigotry rampant in the society. Father Duffy co-wrote a letter in reply to a critic who challenged Smith's ability to lead the nation while adhering to the Catholic faith. The letter used logic to prove that a Catholic could run the country as well as any other man of faith. This letter circulated through the country and through the church hierarchy in Rome. Cardinal John Bonzano called the article a masterpiece and added, It was judged such by everyone here who knows conditions in America. Father Thomas Shelley, writing in American Magazine, links this exchange of ideas to the eventual creation of the Second Vatican Council document, the Declaration on Religious Liberty, which provided the authoritative pronouncement for which Father Duffy was grappling when he declared, We are Catholics and we are Americans, and to both loyalties we stick. The Declaration on Religious Liberty eliminated a long-standing source of suspicion and friction from American political life, and for that happy development, not only Catholic politicians, but all Americans can be grateful to the Second Vatican Council. Father Duffy's engagement in dialogue about religious liberty has opened the door to people of all faiths serving in our nation's political system. Father Duffy's legacy is the spirit that lives on in the millions of lives he has touched and inspired through his courage, his kindness, his humanity, his integrity, his self-sacrifice, his humor, and his empathy for his men. All these qualities made him a great leader in war and have created a strong legacy for peace.